Beefy has signed a multi-fight promotional deal with Boxer and Sky Sports. You know, whenever I hear the name Beefy, I always get flashbacks to that old viral video clip of those two junglers in that rave, peeled off their faces, gurning, spitting some incoherent freestyle. <laughs> you guys know the clip I'm talking about. I think it's called Beefy VIP. They made some song out of it. One of them ones. Anyway, we're not talking about that beefy. One of the guys was called Beefy. The other guy was called Taz. But we're not talking about that Beefy today. We're talking about this Beefy right here, Liam Smith. He signed a multi-fight promotional deal with Boxer and Sky Sports. Now, you all know Liam Smith from the Smith fighting family. He got several brothers who are professionals or former professional fighters. He turned pro back in 2008 under Frank Warren. If we have a look at his record here, just to do a quick recap. Uh, had a early draw against Terry Carruthers. Went on to pick up a vacant WBO strap at 154 pounds. That's really a Frank Warren special because this was against a miscellaneous opponent called Apollo Thompson. Never heard of him before or since. Frank Warren's always had this close relationship with the WBO, so he was able to make that happen. <laughs> and I'm sure Beefy was happy about that. Then he had a couple of defenses against less than stellar opposition before going in against Canelo Alvarez back in 2016. He lost that fight, was stopped in the ninth, came back against a pie before fighting and beating Liam Williams twice in entertaining fights, and then went in against Jaime Munguia in 2018 in another world title attempt, but he lost that on a UD over 12, but he gave a good account of himself that night. And that was his entire run with Frank Warren from 2008 when he turned pro to 2018 when he lost to Jaime Munguia, 10 years. And in that time, Frank Warren provided him with plenty of opportunities, even though he wasn't able to beat the Mungias and the Canelos because he wasn't good enough to beat those guys. He at least got the chance to try. And that's all a promoter can do at the end of the day. If in the division, the champions are particularly good, then your guy's just going to have to be good enough, right? He got him a soft world title fight against Apollo Thompson. But after that, you're going to have to start fighting the other champions. And he went in there against Canelo and got beaten. Went in there against Jaime Munguia, again at 154, and got beaten. So it was what it was. He moved on to Eddie Hearn. And in the time that he's spent with Hearn, from 2019 to 2022, he hasn't had the same opportunities that Frank Warren was able to deliver him. Not the same level of, not the same caliber of opponents, and not the world title fights. So he fought Sam Eggington first then Mario Lozano, then Robert, Roberto Garcia, then Magomed Kobanov. And that fight was controversial. He lost that fight on a UD. A lot of people feel like he deserved to win. But then again, other people feel like it was close and he actually did legitimately lose, but it could have gone either way. That was what that was. He came back against Anthony Fowler and this was the first time that I noticed there was discontent there with Liam Smith because he publicly stated that he wasn't keen on this fight. He felt like it was beneath him, basically, a domestic dust-up. He wanted to move on and fight world champions and get world title fights, and he's being stuck in there against Anthony Fowler. Yeah, he showed he was unhappy. He was dissatisfied with the job Eddie Hearn was doing for him. He then fought Jesse Vargas, who is a former world champion, but a former world champion at 147, not 154. And he managed to stop him, but really... Vargas was uh, you know, past his best. It was what it was. In fact, hasn't Vargas retired since losing to Liam Smith? Anyway, Jesse Vargas stopped him. But again, Eddie Hearn not delivering the opportunities. And you know, at 154, it's a division saturated with Al Heyman fighters. And we know that Eddie Hearn doesn't have a good relationship with Al Heyman. Al Heyman basically, at this stage, almost completely refuses to work with Eddie Hearn. Therefore, if you're Liam Smith, you're thinking, Eddie's not going to get me the opportunities against Al Heyman fighters. I need to go elsewhere. And he's already been with Frank Warren. Maybe he wants to try something fresh and new. He's now signed with Boxer and uh, Sky Sports. Sky Sports, of course, a big platform. Will they be able to do business with Al Heyman? That's assuming Liam Smith wants to stay at 154. Maybe he wants to move up to 160. And there's indications that he's at least willing to for one fight. And that is against Chris Eubank Jr. because he was talking in this interview right here about his uh, 
willingness to fight Chris Eubank Jr. He's also on Sky, of course, not with Boxer, but you know he works with another promoter, Sourland and whatever, and he's also on Sky. So it should be straightforward to make. Eubank Jr. himself has been wanting the Golovkins and all these big names and has been unable to get those names at the moment. So perhaps these two are going to have to fight each other because that's the best money fight on the table right now for them. Now, there is the possibility with Golovkin moving up to fight Canelo and also the situation with Andrade. I don't know whether he's going to vacate that WBO belt. Has it become vacant already? I don't know. There's the possibility some belt becomes vacant at 160 and maybe if Sky and Ben Shalom have enough clout, they could get Eubank Jr. and Liam Smith to fight for a vacant world title. That would obviously satisfy both parties. So we'll see if that can happen. And if it did happen, whether it's for a world title or not, how do you guys think that fight would go? Personally, I think that Eubank Jr., I'm sure, would welcome a fight with Liam Smith stylistically because Liam Smith is a come forward pressure fighter, squares up his shoulders, and is very, it's very inviting for Chris Eubank Jr.'s uppercut. We saw that last time out against Liam Williams, right? We saw that against Spike O'Sullivan early on in his career against Nick Blackwell, even against Avni Yildirim in the World Boxing Super Series. He likes those kind of pressure fighters who come forward, squared up shoulders, high guard. He feasts on those dudes. What I'll say about Liam Smith is that from a technical perspective, he would be the best pressure fighter that Eubank Jr. has faced. Not the biggest, but I would say technically the best. So would that make it more difficult for him? Would that mean that this wouldn't go like the other fights that Eubank Jr. had against these pressure fighters? You guys let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm sure Liam Smith thinks it would go completely different. So uh, that is what that is. Let me know your feelings in the comments about him joining Sky Sports and Boxer. Do you think it's the best move for him? I mean, he's in, it, in the twilight of his career at this point. So what else is he going to do? Do you think it's a good move? And what do you think of the prospect of him fighting Eubank Jr.? How do you think that fight would go? Let me know in the comment section below. If you're tired of the biased narratives and mass censorship on mainstream platforms, and you want to be part of a community of critical thinkers who love free speech just as much as you do, then come and join me on Patreon and access my weekly no holds barred censorship free podcast where we lift the lid on a wide variety of controversial topics. It's not mainstream friendly. It's not politically correct. But that's the whole point. We dare to stand as a beacon of reason against an army of insanity. Just head on over to my Patreon page and select the tier called Hatman Hot Topics. You'll gain access to a minimum of two hours of exclusive content every single week, including podcasts, videos, interviews, live stream Q&As, as well as my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. Not to mention a vast back catalog of hundreds of hours of previous episodes. You can listen via the Patreon app with the option to download in high quality MP3. We've also got an element group where you can come and chat and hang out with myself and other members. Unlike Discord, it has full end-to-end -end encryption, is decentralized, and is 100% censorship free. You can also send voice notes as well as much larger audio and video files than you can on Discord. So come and sign up on Patreon. There's no contract. There's no commitment. You can cancel at any time and it's cheaper than a cup of coffee. So I'll see you over there. I'm out.